Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here at the Navy League's annual Sea Airspace Conference and Trade Show outside Washington, D.C. in National Harbor, Maryland, where our coverage is sponsored by Finn Contieri, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and Leonardo DRS. And we're over here at the BAE Systems stand uh, to talk to Charlie McCullough, who is the Business Development Director uh, for uh, BAE's Maritime uh, Systems uh, Business. Uh, and uh, what a handsome gun uh, you have uh, behind you, Charlie. Well, uh, thanks, Vago. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful uh, uh, Mark 110. Uh, it's the uh, gun that's on the littoral combat ship. It's the gun that's on the national uh, security cutter as well. But you guys continue to improve it. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what's uh, the latest and greatest on the Mark 110. I'd love to, Vaga. Thank you so much. So it is not only on those platforms, but also been chosen for the uh, offshore patrol cutter for the U.S. Coast Guard. There's 25 of those to, uh, in, the, in the plan, so that's good. Um, also, it's been uh, specified for the uh, future frigate, FFGX, a lot of people know FFGX, it's spe specified in it, along with the Alamo round, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, that's right, and we've uh, gone over and talked to the folks at L3, we talked to Alan Brown, uh, who talked to us a little bit about it, but we'd like to talk uh, hear from you as the gun guy, the kind of capability that that's adding to the platform. Right, so w the original Mark 110 was, um, came with a, a training round and a war shot. The Warshot is a, f a formidable, it's called 3P. It has multi-modes of engagement. It has a proximity feud and a time feud. So you can do all sorts of combinations to ha affect the target, but it's not guided. So the next step in capability and performance and lethality is to guide the round. The Alamo round is one that can do that function. And that's uh, in the program of record. And when you uh, put the Mark 110 on the frigate, you also get the Alamo round as well. And, and so talk to us about some of the things you're doing to improve the gun that goes beyond just what ammunition that you're putting in it. Okay, very good. Um, it, you know, the funny thing is, <laughs> it's an amazing gun. We selected this gun uh, multi, many, many years ago for the Coast Guard and, the, like you said, the LCSs. There are multiple different options for guns for the Coast Guard Service and the U.S. Navy to choose. We looked at this gun for its lightweight for its reliability, for its ease of maintenance, and hands down, this is the gun to use. So from a gun perspective, there really isn't that all that much uh, improvements to be done. Where you get the lethality and the, and the capability is in the ammunition. Uh, okay, and uh, so now let's also talk about the adaptive uh, deck launcher. Um, ev everybody is looking at increasing distributed lethality, a uh, very important concept uh, that Admiral Tom Roden, former commander of the Surface Force, uh, was talking about. Uh, a lot of new weapons that are going into the force. Everything is about offensive reach. Talk to us about the adaptive deck launcher. Uh, very good. Thank you so much. So um, BA Systems has taken the Mark 41 VLS. The, the building block for that system is the canister. Every missile that flies out of the Mark 41 is encased in a canister. In this case, we sew the ESSM, which has four missiles in one cell. And that's the uh, Evolve Sea Sparrow, uh, which is uh, a closer-in defense system, not quite your uh, close-in weapon system, which is the gun or the rolling airframe system, but something of a more intermediate range. Exactly. And th this, this uh, missile is used in our Navy and multiple other navies. It's a consortium, um, w worldwide coverage. Um, what we actually had fired this round uh, in the demonstration out of Dahlgren, out of this, this uh, full scale of this. Um, one thing is that the, uh, the block upgrade for the SSM makes it so that the current launchers on the carriers can no longer handle the weight. So there's a requirement for a launcher that can handle that new weight. This is, this is an answer to that. And, and part of what you're also trying to do is to be able to put this on the deck of a ship as opposed to necessarily cut through the deck or put it into the structure of the ship, especially if the ship is not designed to accommodate that. Absolutely. What you can do is on multiple classes, everywhere from uh, the LCS, FFGX, up to big decks, you can place this on the deck of a ship and be able to fire the rounds, the, the missiles that you fire out of the VLS from that ship class. Um, and, and let me ask you one other question. I mean, re reloading at sea has become something that everybody is talking about. Uh, you get a lot of benefits from the Mark 41 system, but one of the things is you can't replenish at sea the way you used to be able to with uh, older launchers. Is there any work you guys are doing to figure out how to be able to replenish at sea, rearm at sea, uh, in the event, you know, God forbid, in a full-up conflict that everybody has shot off their loads and they want to make sure that they want to reload it? it can you do that? Or are you guys doing any work on that? That's one of the beauties of the adaptive deck launcher. The, the canisters are loaded horizontally, not vertically. So when you try to take a 20 plus foot canister weighing thousands of pounds up and have it keep its stability and drop it into a 
24, uh, 20, 12, uh, 24 by 24 square, very, very difficult to do. This is loaded horizontally. So you can load the canister using um, uh, deck handling equipment and then load it into the launcher uh, with a simple crane. So there are going to be no modifications you guys are making as you transition this to the, to the frigate design, or are there any changes to ammunition handling and a couple of other subtle things as you constantly, you know, sort of modestly tweak the design? Okay. Uh, there's a few things that we're working on okay, that gives the flexibility of this. So right now, um, the, like I said, there, it was designed for the war shot and the practice round. Okay? Um, when you introduce Alamo and some even high, more higher advanced uh, guided rounds in the future, um, you need to be able to select between the, the four rounds. So we're, we're working on a selectability to select four separate rounds at the choice of the CO or the gunner's mate. And let me ask you one last question on the adaptive deck launcher. Is this a program of record, or is this a very highly evolved intellectual science project for you guys? Okay, neither. So this, <laughs> this is, there's a requirement for the FFGX to have an on-deck launcher. It's called the OTH, Over the Horizon Weapon System. Okay? It is still in competition okay, for that. We went, took a different approach. Instead of having, a when you put a new launcher and a new missile each time you have a new missile, use the Mark 41 concept, any missile, any cell. So instead of putting one missile in there for the over the horizon weapon system for distributed lethality, you can put ESSM, which you talked about before, you can put Tomahawk, you can put standard missile, you can put all the missiles that go into the VLS into this launcher. You, you design, build, qualify one launcher, and it goes on all the different applications. Charlie, thanks very much. Best of luck on both of the programs and all the other things that are under your watch. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care.